about three shots easily inside of three foot there, which then all of a sudden you're starting to get to the point where your up and downs are going to get a bit better. Yeah. But again, it's just so much more, it's just so simple that I can just kind of, no, I love like it. it wouldn't matter which day we come up here. If, if you asked me to do it, I'd be able to, because it is, it's quite simple stuff. You find a lot of people's anxieties come from short game. Mm. Um, and to have been able to have kind of made things this simple for people with that has probably been the biggest change that I've made. That fella. <laughs> So it's a bit close. I oh know, but I can't. My arms no can't get any longer. Yeah, there you go. That's better. I've got longer arms than you. That's why I <laughs> drove you on that previous <laughs> hole. Um, so obviously, no matter how far and how well you hit it, you don't get on tour do you, without a decent short game. No. So Liam's going to take us through. Um, well, you tell us what we're going to go through. Going to go through basically one of the things that I see quite a lot, which is that a lot of people when they talk about short game, they don't even they they don't even understand when they're setting up to a shot exactly what shot they're trying to hit. So. If you're kind of a couple of yards off the green and, and you need it to, to run out quite a bit, people will try and hit a pitch shot. Um, just again, just not understanding the difference between a, what I call a chip and a pitch. So basically a chip is a ball that travels less, runs more, a uh, pitch then is something that flies further, runs less. So the f first and foremost, you can't just have one chipping technique so you need to know the difference between the two in the short game uh, so we're going to go through just those really quickly and then the last piece we're going to add in then is just a very simple way to get um, some different flights for each stock shot so it's pretty simple stuff really okay. uh, just try and make everything as easy and as simple as possible cool and um, just quickly before we get into the sort of more technical side of it how much of your time do you spend practicing this stuff still compared to say hitting balls and probably 80% on this it'd be that high yeah 80% of it's split between putting and chipping and then the other 20% on hitting balls yeah uh, I very rarely hit balls to be honest unless unless it's something that feels drastically wrong in my swing and I want to work on one little part of it that'll be the only time I really hit the range generally if I'm wanting to hit balls or whatever I'll just nip out on the course and play holes and just hit the odd spare shot if I hit a bad one yeah and uh, when you're practicing short game mm -hmm. I see people kind of stood there with say 20 or 30 balls hitting the same shot over and over again mm -hmm. Do you do that to kind of ingrain stuff or do you like mix it up a bit Again, more? that's understanding the difference between technical sessions and, and kind of performance sessions. Uh, if I'm working on something again technically, I'll do that. If I'm working on like preparing for a tournament or, um, or, or something like that, I would generally go to some of the short game games that, that I have in my library of things to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'll, again, it, it just depends what time of year and then where I'm at competition wise. Okay. Cool. So, all right. So, take it away. What? So, we'll we'll go through basically the the two techniques first that I like to use. Mm -hmm. um, we'll just start with a chip first because it's a, it's a lot more simple. So, a chip. Obviously, what we're looking for is the ball to not fly very far and then roll out. And a lot of people kind of ask me the question around the greens: Do you use loads of different clubs? The answer from me personally is no. Um, because I find that when people are using eight irons and stuff, they they tend to just kind of get way too much shaft lean, and and it causes problems. Then when they then go and try and pitch a ball, a lot of people that are decent chippers struggle with pitch shots. Yeah. Um, so and I generally find that's because their problems that they've got in their technique are covered up when they hit a chip. Yeah. Um, so with a chip, it's very simple. The things we're looking for: low flights, lots of run. So. First thing I do is stand in nice and close, get the get the handle up a little bit. I get the ball a little bit further back in my stance. Um, it's the only time really that I'll do this. Uh, and then literally from there, I, I then tend to keep the angle in my wrists and then it's more of a carry back and carry through technique. Um, and one of the things that I like to feel is that I'm almost trying to keep the club head as low as I can in the follow through. Okay. Uh, the reason I do that is Obviously, if I'm trying to keep the ball low, I'm going to struggle to keep the ball low if the club's up here. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for almost imagining that if you had, I don't know, say like a couple of buckets with an alignment stick through it and it's kind of this height. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when I'm coaching chipping, I'll hold a club here in front of people and tell them they've got to cut the club off before the club. Um, and the reason for that is, is that obviously if I want to hit it low, if I can concentrate on cutting it off here and hitting the ball low, it's going to make things a lot easier for us. So. Again, basic chip would be slightly further back, in nice and close, hands up, keep everything rigid, and we're going to hit that nice low flight, 
with a good bit of run on it. Yeah. Um, then we get to the pitch shots. So generally a pitch is, for me, it's anything from, it doesn't matter whether it's 10 yards or up to maybe 60 yards or something like that. It's generally the same technique. So you're gonna probably have seen the three hole course management video we had now when you heard me discussing the hands back thing. But the, the, one of the big things, even on a shot like that, is that I'm using this technique whilst I'm doing it, even though it's kind of 65 yards. Um, so the general pitch for me is about connection. So arms stay close, particularly the left arm, because most people when they hit, when they're poor pitchers, get this action here where their wrist starts to bow down to the ground, which gets you the leading edge of the club. And that generally actually comes from separation under here that I found. Uh, for me personally, when I pitch, that's a huge part of it for me, is this part here. If I ever feel that that gets away, I, that's when I'm struggling mm -hmm. um, and I, I can hit some pretty horrific chip, uh, pretty horrific pitch shots. So first thing is connection and then literally from there all we're doing is maintaining that and working our chest a little bit more. Um, and again, that's how simple it can be broken down into. So the only thing that I add with a lot of my shots um, is that I kind of, I don't like the club head being too far forwards. I like it to be quite square and, and stood up in, in towards more, the, more central than having the forward lean and the reason I do that is I try and avoid every thing that I can that creates that angle so shaft lean and, and leading edge I want I want to almost be hitting down with the bounce so that I'm hitting that quite hard down and I'm not even taking a divot whereas if I go this way it digs straight away um, and one of the things that I was showing Rob earlier was to give you that comfort of knowing that you've not got to strike the ball perfectly is something quite big so mm. basically if I if I was to put a tee peg in the ground um, if I can find one, here we go. If I was to put the tee peg in the ground kind of a couple of inches behind, yeah. so we're probably talking three inches here. If I do that with the leading edge, I miss the ball. I can then basically do that with the bounce. If I should move it over a little bit. If I then do that with the bounce that far behind, I can still actually make half decent contact with the shot. Yeah. Obviously it's not perfect because I've hit it that far behind, but you forgiving. get away with it yeah. and it actually stops uh, yeah. still so for me i try and do everything i possibly can to work the bounce and i don't think a lot of people understand that and it's something that i've learned a lot about over the last three or four months um so the bounce is key for everything because it actually gives you you'll hear me say this a lot um is just room for error yeah uh, so basically so for the pitch it's kind of i don't like too much of this i like to have it in pretty central and for a basic pitch shot uh, I just literally like to hands kind of in normal keep the connection here and just keep it everything moving around and again you can hear that nice um, nice connection where I'm not digging whatsoever but I've hit that probably 20 yards 25 yards if you were um, hitting like um say a 60 or 70 yard pitch shot from fairway like you know out on the course yep would you take a divot or would you be looking just to kind of brush it and pick it clean Again, it all just depends where you're playing. Like if I, I think it's the ground that determines it, but I'm always hitting down, um, but I'm hitting down with the bounce. Yeah. So if it's a nice firm course like this, you're not really going to do too much. Whereas obviously if it's quite wet, you would still. Yeah. Um, but no, it, I don't really try and overly think about that stuff too much. All mm -hmm. I'm ever trying to do is deliver the bounce down. Because when people, Gary Barter uh, discussed this with me and he discussed basically when people start struggling, it's because they lose the bottom. And what he means by that is, is they can't feel how it should feel down by the ball. So that's when people start kind of yipping it and flicking it and doing all kinds of weird movements because they can't feel what it's like at the bottom. Yeah. Um, so I find when I'm doing these kind of techniques, it's just a lot less going on. And all I'm trying to do all the time is just deliver the club into the ground. Um, yeah, so that's the basic pitch shot. So that's the two shots. Yeah. Um, and then if you want variations on them. So once you've got your basic techniques, um, you then might want to kind of vary up your flights and and stuff like that so the way that I like to kind of play the short game is I like to have my basic techniques and then I like to have different flights that I don't have to do a load of crazy things to create so I don't want to be kind of doing anything to add height or kind of having to do anything to create different flights so the thing that I do is I keep the technique exactly the same but what I I, I like to do is this kind of five ball dress. Five balls is generally the correct kind of width and stance that you're looking for when you're hitting a pitch shot. So basically you put five balls down and just for a standard shot, you just set up to the middle ball with the club behind it like you normally would. 
and then you, again you just hit it normally so the nice connection and that generally produces like a medium flight oh lipped out just for the standard one Um, and then what you do is actually almost imagining you're almost always addressing this middle ball with your body but then just change the ball position along the five balls so you use low medium high and then just kind of miss out the middle ones mm -hmm. um, and again what, what this does is, is it basically gets you in a little bit closer and all of a sudden it just adds the shuffling that you need to work the same club to de-loft it so you're making the same movement but the yeah, ball position is exactly changing exactly the same movement but ball position is just changed yeah. in and amongst this and but it changes a lot of things without you noticing it gets everything a bit more it gets you the lead wrist angle that you need to hit one lower to take spin off of a shot so if i was to hit one from here now same technique it comes out nice and low yeah and flat and then obviously the front ball then is going to be the complete opposite so what it does, again, if I'm always setting up to this ball here, it automatically puts the shaft behind to add loft and it activates the bounce so that we can launch one up into the air more. Um, so again, it's the exact same thing. We hit a nice high spinner. Oh, grabby. Earlier, keep it all connected. And that's like four times as high. Um, so you if you're out on the course, mm -hmm. obviously you haven't got the five balls laid yep. down. Is there a way that you could kind of carry this across? Because I'm thinking like... There, like, you're going to have to practice it a little bit. Yeah. Um, because obviously a lot of it's visualisation. Mm. So you're going to have to have those balls there so that you can, when you look down, so that, that looks normal. And then literally from there, kind of, even if those balls weren't there, I would still stand at the same width and I can still kind of visualise where yeah. each ball should be. So I know that if I'm stood with my, with my feet five balls apart, I know that if I put my club back here, that's going to be somewhere towards the back ball. So I know what that's going to create through my, from my practice. Yeah. And then, and again, vice versa for the for the front one. I know that if I'm, if, as long as I've always got my feet this wide apart, when I put it up here, I'm always going to deliver the club the way I need to to hit it high. Yeah. So, so yeah, not really too like it's not something massively to think about. It's just something that you put it down there for practice. It becomes what you're used to seeing, and then you just go around it for everything else you were saying that you're not someone who likes to kind of use different clubs around the green all the time no what do you use 60 60 for pretty much everything pretty much everything i might just whack a 56 in if i've got a if i feel i've got to flight it lower for further i'll grab a 56 sometimes but uh, even if you've got to hit like a sort of or you want to hit a low runny chip you'll use a 60 i still use a 60 mate yeah interesting yeah about three shots easily inside a three foot there which then all of a sudden you're starting to get to the point where your up and down is going to get a bit better yeah but again, it's just so much more it's just so simple that i can just kind of no, I love like it. it wouldn't matter which day we come up here if, if you asked me to do it i'd be able to because it is it's quite simple stuff so obviously you've got those three different options mm -hmm. Is there one that you'd like favour? So say if there was always loads of green to work with, would you tend to go for like the low one or the standard? Or just or? Different scenarios. So like, for example, if I was stood here now and we had different pins on this green. So if I had a back left pin, that's just, it, that would probably be more of a shot that I'd, I'd go to my favourite one. So I could play that all three ways, but for me, taking that slope out of play is the easiest. So even though that shot's probably 35 yards, I'd still have it up in my stance a bit and I'd probably go for the highest spinnier one and fly it all the way to the top tier like that. Yeah. Because then I can get it to settle. So that's almost kind of the tier that we're looking for. But equally, if you're a low runner of the ball, see, I, I prefer the higher stuff. I, I do prefer to see things a bit more flighted. Like you could be, you could be the lower one, and you could probably run it up a little bit. So it's just kind of personal preference and how you see it. Yeah, because well, I've just played the same shot twice, and obviously uh, uh, they're both pretty good. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's, it's all just depends on the shot. Uh, like if I was faced with a shot like this, this is just a standard pitch shot. I don't need to do anything crazy with it. Middle of the stance, hit it normally, and you'll notice out of all the three that I committed to properly, the the first one that I hit is always kind of. It, went, it nearly went in it was yeah. because that's probably the shot you practice the most yeah. um but yeah mate, that's that's kind of because realistically in a round of golf you're not going to need to go higher than what you do with the with the with the forward one you're so not going to need gonna to go have higher to start than that. going like crazy nah, technique and... like how many times realistically do you actually need to hit a full flop shot yeah probably once a month yeah people do try and hit three around but 
it's craziness because the, the last one that I hit there was so soft and high don't really need to do much more um, but just if you can keep it within these boundaries it's gonna make it a lot easier for you but yeah it's definitely been the bit that I've found has helped people probably the most as much as the smash bag stuff in the long game has changed people's games like you just whacked a 340 hour drive um, trying to make everything this simple in the short game because you find a lot of people's anxieties come from short game mm. um, and to have been able to have kind of made things this simple for people with that has probably been the biggest change that I've made but it is, it's just making things as simple as you can with the short game just mm. take error out of it mm. um, and when you're, when you're pitching it's normally just using the bounce yeah so yeah awesome simple as that man I like that mate